What does it mean to be a teenage girl who is interested in STEM? As many of you know, STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. For me, it means fighting statistics, trying to make sure that I'm not just another number. Whenever you hear about women in STEM, it feels like there's just thousands of statistics thrown in your face. Kind of ironic, right? Statistics, an essential component of STEM, being used to explain one of the community's largest problems. The gender discrepancy in STEM is undeniable. And I know many of you are probably going, Linnea, you're exaggerating, or this doesn't apply to me. I would never discriminate against a girl. Yet, then I ask you, if we all agree that we're not the ones discriminating, then why is there a problem? Because yes, there is a problem. Now, there are many factors which are directly linked to a girl's success in the STEM field. Her parents, the amount of lab work she does, the resources available to her at home, the curriculum she's taught, and her connection with teachers are all directly linked to her chances of success. Now, one of the largest problems is that there's not one clear point in time when girls stop being interested or taking part in science. It's a very gradual problem. This is referred to as the leaky pipe problem. So let's imagine an equal number of girls and boys start together in a kindergarten science class. For each major milestone, the beginning of middle school, high school, your undergrad, masters, all the way up until your PhD. For each boy that drops out, two or more girls drop out. Now, this means it's a gradual decrease. It's hard to tell that there's any sort of problem until it becomes very significant. It's actually been shown that simply just putting in more girls into the pipeline does not improve the problem. They just seem to be leaking out at an even faster rate. Now, conveniently, this is most prevalent in one of the fields that I'm interested in, engineering. Engineering is all about being able to take parts and putting them together in new and interesting ways. To do this, we need spatial analysis skills. Spatial analysis skills are all about being able to visualize where those parts go. They're often taught at a very young age from doing things such as playing with blocks. Now, what do we stereotypically give our sons to play? What do we give our daughters? We give our sons blocks and our daughters dolls. So it's no wonder, then, that when it comes time to start engineering, that a higher percentage of boys have spatial analysis skills. Now, this does not mean that girls can't quickly and easily learn them, but it's that initial setback that demotivates them and causes more leakage. Now, as a result, only one in seven engineers is female. And on average, for each dollar that a for each five, on average, a male earns five dollars per hour for the exact same work. Now, let's take a step back and look at the United States workforce. Women make up 48 percent. But if we zoom into the STEM workforce, suddenly they only make up 24 percent. This needs to improve. Female re women, researchers, female researchers only make up 30 percent of the community. We've actually, this has remained constant over the past 18 years. We've actually seen a decrease in the number of women in computer science and math jobs. It's not improving. The more women we seem to be putting into the pipeline, the faster they seem to be leaking out. Out of the 209 Nobel Prize winners in physics, only three have been female. Now, these statistics have meaning. They show that there's an undeniable misrepresentation and problem within the community, and it's something that we cannot ignore. It's no wonder, then, that women form clusters in the workspace. This is not due to the lack of mentorship, but due to the stereotypes they face. They are often deemed as too emotional or too aggressive or too weak and seen as unfit leaders. But I ask you, is being too emotional such a bad thing? With emotion comes creation, passion, innovation, things which are essential to solving STEM's largest problems. So let's use all of our brains. Now, I know many of you are probably agreeing, or hopefully agreeing, with what I've been saying, but are thinking, this doesn't apply to our school. 
And thankfully, you are right. But the sign of any great school, like FIS, is to take a step back and ask, how can we improve? Interestingly, I've only had male STEM teachers since ninth grade. Now, this might seem irrelevant, but unfortunately, it's not. While I was researching for this talk, I actually found that male teachers teach boys and girls differently. When a student asks a question, they're much more likely to give male students a hint and girls the answer. Now, this affects how we learn. Hints forces you to grow, to think, and can be really rewarding when you get it right. But getting the answer right away, that can be demotivating. It can hurt your confidence. This causes more leakage from the pipe. So when I found this out, I began looking for signs of it in my own classrooms. I didn't notice it consistently, but I felt like it happened to me more than it happened to my male classmates. Interestingly, though, this pattern has not been noted in female teachers, but what has been noted is just having a female teacher has increased girls' test scores drastically. Now, this is an advantage that girls like me and me will never have. Another thing we must ask ourselves is, do teachers have different expectations of male and female students in the sciences? At the beginning of each year, I've always felt that I've needed to earn the respect for my teachers, the respect I felt my male classmates were given automatically. Only after I received my high-scoring tests did I feel like I truly earned the respect. This bothered me. Why did I have to earn the respect that they were given automatically? Another thing we must ask ourselves is, is it good enough to be skilled and have an aptitude in your profession? Unfortunately, it's not. One of the biggest things that I've noticed in myself, my sister is also in a STEM field, and many of the STEM women I know, is the forced adaptation of stereotypically male personality traits. Women at any age who are interested or take part in STEM try to distance themselves from these stereotypically female character traits. They try not to be too emotional or talk about their family lives, and they try to be tough, tougher than their male colleagues. Now, I think this is because the, male, the STEM field has been male-dominated for centuries. There's this subconscious notion that women need to fit their personalities into that spectrum. It links back to needing to earn respect rather than it being given automatically. It made me wonder, how did this affect the way that I presented myself to my peers, my teachers, and my mentors? So I made an active effort to embrace my emotions at all times. And to no surprise, this did come with some snide comments from some of my male classmates. I recently had a friend turn to me and say, I think crying is so stupid. It was just a typical backhand comment, but it bothered me. We were discussing a friend of mine who had been caught in crying after being frustrated in a previous class. See, I see crying as something beautiful, there's this rush of emotion, and as previously discussed, emotion causes innovation, creation, and passion. And I know many of you are thinking, sure, crying is fine, but it's not professional and it should not be in the workplace. But I beg to differ, because not only is there that rush of emotion, there's also the calm clarity which comes afterwards. And that clarity, it can be essential to problem solving, which is really important in the STEM community. So crying gives you that rush and the clarity, which can be used to address some of STEM's largest research questions. Now, to wrap things up, I think what's difficult about this issue is that there's not one clear, easy solution. But I think what's most important for me and for all of you is that we take a step back and we think how society might be shaping our decisions and our actions. We need to check ourselves, and question ourselves. We've been blessed with this amazing decision-making machine, which has the ability to create, analyze, dream, and imagine things we need to solve some of STEM's most important research questions. So let's embrace all of it. Let's dream, create, analyze, and imagine. Thank you.